Welcome to The Daily Grind, where we deliver new content every week. My name is Kevin J. Mack, Exit 160 Entertainment. And if you are remotely interested in drawing comics and how-to tutorials, you're definitely in the right place. For today's episode, I'm gonna show you guys my process for designing a logo from start to finish. So stay tuned. Welcome back. Today is a great day for creating a logo. But first, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit that like button below and make sure that you subscribe so you won't be left out in the dark as new content is being uploaded. It has been a minute since I've last touched on logos, mainly because my focus has been on comics, but a good friend of mine needed me in the clutch. So here I am ready to answer the call. Now, there's gonna be a number of things that we're gonna to cover today. And please remember there's more than one way to skin a cat. There are six items that we're gonna focus on. The first is the initial consultation. This is where you're gonna sit down, you're gonna physically sit down with the client and talk about the project in detail. The second thing is brainstorming research. After the consultation, you're gonna consolidate your notes and start gathering your reference material for the design. Third thing is the initial sketch. Don't think, just get those initial ideas down on paper, or if you prefer digital like I do, get that stuff down on the canvas. The fourth thing is refinement, all right? So you're gonna get your design as clean as you possibly can. Understand there's never a perfect, there's never a perfect design, but you wanna get it as close to perfect as you possibly can prior to going to the client. The fifth thing is time to send that logo to the client, all right? So at this point, you wanna package up the design and what I like to do is I like to provide a few brief comments about some of the things that I've done while working on the design. The last thing is the uh, revise and finalization of the design. Okay, so at this point you sent the design off to the client based on the feedback, all right? Once it comes back, you're gonna take, the, take that feedback and you're gonna make the necessary changes and then put a bow on it. All right, so first things first. The very first thing that you need to do is to have a sit down consultation with your client, or in this case, my friend, and ask the question, what do you have in mind with regards to the logo? Now, if you haven't seen my previous video on the five things you as a owner should consider prior to approaching a graphic artist about a logo, make sure you check it out. Link is in the description below. Now, at this point, you wanna get a better understanding of who you are designing for and any background information that you can receive from or about the company. You're definitely in data collection mode because you are trying to get a feel about the type of products, the services, and overall, what are they trying to achieve through the logo design process? Now, after the consultation, this is what I was able to learn. The logo is gonna be for a service member in the military. So we are looking to design a military logo. Uh, from time to time, people reach out uh, for logos for souvenirs that they're gonna have at a military ball, uh, designs uh, for a guide on, or even tattoos. However, me personally, when I'm being asked about tattoo designs, which is often, I tend to be a bit cautious because I'm a graphic designer, not a tattoo artist. How we process projects, how we go about thinking about going about those projects can be a little different at times. With that, for the tattoo artist, it could be a bit awkward being given a design from another artist's original work. Best practice is give the tattoo artist the design and allow them to make it their own design. It's okay to come in with the foundation, but I'll leave that for another video. So getting back to the logo. Um, so you wanna make sure that the logo is both suitable and acceptable. So now that you have a better understanding of who you are designing for, it's time to do some research. All right, so we are looking at a military thing as I hop on my uh, computer and start pulling reference material from a simple Google search. And there are a number of other search engines out there that you can use as well, like Pinterest, uh, Evato, Adobe Stock Photo to start pulling reference material from. Uh, 
you already have an idea of what you are looking for, but the kicker is during the initial consultation, don't underestimate the power of casual conversation with the client because there may be key things or other elements that they may touch on that you can use later for the design. Since it is a military theme, I needed to see the current unit insignia. Um, the logo is gonna be based off of the 160th. Uh, we have the soar wings uh, with the sword. Uh, the theme, Night Stalkers Don't Quit. NSDQ, Special Operations, which will be key components of the design. Now, we also have the regimental crest, wing centaur with the crescent moon. Colors seem to be uh, red, which is in the sword, some gray, blue, and yellow that will make up the rest of the color palette. Now, I can't say it enough. You want to make your conversation with the client as comfortable as possible. The more comfortable the client is, the more willingly they are um, gonna open up to you. Um, now, from the discussion that I had with the client, I found out that he was a huge, talking about a huge Game of Thrones and Punisher fan. With that knowledge, uh, for the sword, I was thinking I could use um, some of the references from uh, Game of Thrones. Uh, here we have Arya Stark with Needle. Of course, we gotta have some Valyrian steel, right? We have Horace Bane, Whittle, Whittle's Wall. I'm glad this guy got the ax. Uh, long claw, and to top it off, we have some dragon glass, uh, a dragon glass sword from um, Beric the Darien. So we're gonna incorporate some of these some of these elements into the into the logo. Can't wait to can't wait to see the final product. All right, so once I am done with my research, it's time to hop onto the Cintiq, and this is where the magic happens. Nowadays, I work more than 95% digitally using Clip Studio Paint. Uh, if I am on the road, I usually carry my trusty iPad Pro, but this is the time where I am going to get all of my initial sketches down, just getting ideas down without even thinking about it. Sometimes it is bound to come together, or in many cases, uh, start to bring out other ideals. So at this point, we're just trying to um, jot down as many initial thoughts, ideas, and a little bit of word association to kind of get those uh, creative juices flowing. Uh, as we try to get as many thumbnails down onto the canvas, it is very important to remember that we are in the rough stage. We're just simply laying down the foundation. All right, so what you're gonna try to do is Try to explore as many different options as you possibly can. Uh, the idea isn't to be perfect, but to keep that pencil, gotta keep that stylus moving and free as much as possible. Try to generate as many different ideas as you possibly can. I know sometimes it can be a little pressure trying to create these perfect refined sketches that have these beautiful colors that have been rendered out, much like what you will see on any other social media platform, whether it be Facebook or IG. Um, but by and large, that's exactly what they are. They're refined, final rendered sketches that have more from the type of initial ideas, sketches that we're doing right now. So don't be too hard on yourself and listen, I understand. Um, sometimes I have to remind myself that I can't beat myself up, that I gotta keep on uh, chipping away and uh, everything else will take care of itself. Okay, so now that we have a few options, now you want to start incorporating your process of elimination. Uh, we are going to be choosing one design and start refining the line work. All right, so I think uh, I'm going to go with this one. So let's get her done.
All right, we are back and this is the pre-final design. Booyah. The logo at this point is ready to be sent to the client. What I like to do when I send it is provide a brief synopsis of what I have done. Now, you don't have to go into heavy detail, but a simple magic statement that gives the client that bit of confidence that you took their guidance and applied it to the design. With that, I appreciate you guys hanging out with me today. At this point, once the design is sent out, it's just a waiting game. Once I get the design back, I will take the client's recommendations and I will make the revisions and eventually I can close the job out and move on to the next project. I hope everyone enjoyed the video. Until next time, be sure to like, subscribe, and join the Exit 160 movement. Peace.